What's up guys and welcome to another video. Today we are going to be taking another look at a celebrity's car collection and we've got an impressive one for you today. But just a reminder, there's still over 70% of you who are not yet subscribed. So all you have to do if you want to join us in this family watching these videos, all you have to do is click that subscribe button down below. And while you're at it, comment down below the name of a celebrity you would love for us to cover and we'll be taking the person who's the most recurring to cover next week. But today, we're going to talk about Ralph Lauren. I'm sure you all know Ralph Lauren, legendary American designer. He has a net worth estimated at about $6 billion and probably one of the most unbelievable car collections in the world. I don't think we're going to be able to cover all of his cars today because there are just so many. But I've picked a few of the ones that I thought were the most impressive with the most incredible history and stories behind them. Now his car collection is estimated to be worth around $300 million and they've won countless prizes and there are modern cars, old cars, there's a bit of everything. So let's get started. When you had 17 of your cars displayed at the Louvre, just in honor of your car collection, you know you've got a pretty impressive set of cars. Ralph Lauren also used some of his cars uh, for his 2017 fall winter fashion line and during the fashion show back then. I apologize for my finger, by the way. I sliced it open not too long ago. Let's kickstart things with some modern cars first and then we're gonna get on to some of the more classic cars. We're gonna be talking Bugatti, Ferrari, the 250 GTO, the world's most expensive car as well, a Bugatti Atlantic at the end of this video. We're gonna give you the history on that one. Let's kickstart things where we usually end these videos, which is with Bugatti, and specifically the Bugatti Veyron, the first generation 16.4. Ralph Lauren has one of these in black, now, it was first spotted and associated with him when he was driving it near his ranch and he was spotted by a car spotter who noticed the New York license plate and the fact that it was near Ralph Lauren's ranch, he figured it was probably Ralph Lauren driving it. So this is a all blacked out, standard chrome rims, Bugatti Veyron, so 1,001 horsepower. And indeed, when he was taking these photos, it was Ralph driving it. Pretty cool to see him out and about using his Bugatti Veyron. Of course, this is a car which is worth over a million dollars. Now he didn't stop there with the Bugatti Veyrons. Rumor has it, this hasn't yet been confirmed, that Ralph Lauren then bought a second Bugatti Veyron, but this time a Super Sport. So the Super Sport is a slightly more powerful version of the standard Veyron, but a lot has changed from the suspension setup, the aerodynamics outside, it's a completely different car. Only 30 coupes were made and a limited production world record edition, WRE, of which only five were made, were sold to a few clients around the world, two of which known to be in the US. And rumor has it, one of those is owned by Ralph Lauren. Now the rumors were started when the Bugatti Veyron WRE was delivered at Ralph Lauren's home in Colorado right after Pebble Beach. There are a few differences actually on this car compared to a normal WRE, um, such as the logos, which are in a different color. So there are rumors that this could be either a sixth WRE or even a whole new special edition made for Ralph, but he hasn't confirmed this publicly, so we can't be sure of course, but you can kind of assume that if a Bugatti Veyron, super rare one of this type, clearly the kind of car he likes, is delivered to his home in Colorado, it probably is. Ralph didn't stop there with the modern supercars, he then went straight to Italy, to Lamborghini, where he bought himself an LP670-4, a limited hardcore version of the Murcielago model. Now 670 represents the amount of horsepower, so 670 horsepower, and this is a hardcore limited edition version of the Murcielago LP640. Originally, the plan was to build 350 of these cars, but they only actually sold 186. So a super rare car, very few in manual. To our knowledge, Ralph Lauren's one has the single clutch flappy paddle gearbox, still an epic car. They've flown up in value. He then also bought a similar, but much more expensive Lamborghini, the Reventon. The Reventon is a super limited fighter jet looking version of the Murcielago, again, based on the LP640 platform. It's got 641 horsepower, designed after a fighter jet. The dashboard inside looks like something out of a fighter jet and just the general look of the car. Now, 36 were made worldwide, 20 coupes, 15 roadsters, 
Rouse from the photos we can see is a roadster, so even more rare than the coupes. And then one coupe was actually made to be stored in the Lamborghini Museum. So very, very rare car, an awesome addition to the collection. As we mentioned earlier, in 2017, Ralph Lauren hosted a fashion show in which he showcased some of his supercars. So the models were walking around a line of some of his most prized supercars, and these are actually some of his modern cars. A few of you, you guys will recognize. But I was super interested by the fact that in the background, there was a really rare roof CTR3. So it was the furthest car away. There aren't too many photos or videos of it during the fashion show. But a super rare hypercar produced by Roof, Ruff, however you want to call it, which is a world-renowned Porsche tuning company. Now, normally they take 911s and things like that and they'll tune them to their liking. But here they decided to take as a basis Porsche, a Porsche engine producing 691 horsepower, 3.7 litre twin turbocharged flat six, and build the ultimate hypercar on top of it. A real connoisseur's piece. Now, 30 of these were made as the standard CTR3, and in seven club sports were made as well after that. So 37 units total, super rare car, and really interesting to see during the fashion show. Wasn't the only hypercar there. He also had on the front line, as you can tell, his Ferrari La Ferrari. 500 of these made, 499 sold to clients, and one kept at Ferrari. His is in a particularly rare black paint color. Looks awesome and was the front piece of this fashion show, close to 1,000 horsepower and one of the rarest and fastest appreciating modern Ferraris. Behind that in the line, you can also probably see a Porsche 918 Spyder. So with close to 900 horsepower, 0 to 60 in 2.7 seconds and 217 miles per hour as a top speed, you'd think that having one of these bad boys would be enough, but Ralph Lauren has bought himself two. So we can see that this one during the fashion show is actually kitted out with the Visec package which is a pack that you buy for around 200,000 euros from Porsche, gives you some fancy looking magnesium wheels and little carbon winglets at the back of the car and makes it just a bit more rare and those have actually appreciated quite a lot more. So Ralph Lauren has the Hypercar Trio, not once, but for some of them twice, such as the 918. The LaFerrari, we believe he only has one, but the P1, which you can then see behind, which is another one of the Hypercar trio he's also got two of so i believe at least there's photos of him being associated with a black one and then during the fashion show there was a yellow one which appeared so i believe he probably has two of these limited to only 375 pieces worldwide these actually took a while to sell but then once they were all sold out they started appreciating quite a bit hybrid hypercar as well super limited with a similar amount of power to the others and it's actually got the exact same speed top speed as the porsche 918 at 217 miles per hour. When you see this line of four cars and consider that everyone is at least a million dollars, starts to put into context just how impressive this car collection is and just how much the total value of it is worth. Right now we're gonna get onto some of his classic cars of which there are many, so I've selected some of them. We're gonna start with a 1929 four and a half liter Birkin blower Bentley. Now this is a really particular car, only two of these were ever made. One was recently sold actually in 2012 by Bonhams for $8.6 million. This is kind of an unwanted child. The car was built against the wishes of W.O. Bentley who didn't want one of his cars to be supercharged. So he never wanted this to be built, but then went on having quite a successful career as a racer. Ralph Lauren bought the chassis number HR3976 in 1988, and it was then restored back to its original condition. Absolute beauty of a car. His particular one actually had a second place finish in the 1930 French Grand Prix. Another super interesting and legendary car is Ralph Lauren's 1956 Jaguar XKSS. Based on the legendary racing car, the Jaguar E-Type, which won Le Mans in 1955, 56 and 57, all on the trot and which was immortalized by Steve McQueen. The XKSS is basically a road going version of the D-Type. So once they finished all the racing, they had some chassis lying around and thought they would make a road going version. So they added doors, they added side windows, Windows, they made the front windscreen a little bit higher and it looks vaguely E-type like but it's based on the legendary D-type. Originally there were 16 of these chassis that were potentially lying around to be built but then there was a fire at the factory so only two ever ended up being produced. In 1989 Ralph Lauren bought chassis number XKD533 of the Jaguar XKSS, one of the two original cars based on the D-type chassis. Now we don't really know how much this would be worth but presumably 
many, many millions as well because of how rare the original cars like this are. There have been some cars which have now been built um, using some original parts, but the only original, original ones fully built by Jag based on the D-Type, there are only two. There's Ralph Lauren's and the other one is in the Peterson Museum in LA. One of many one-offs actually owned by Ralph Lauren is his 1930 Mercedes-Benz SSK Count Trossi. Super interesting car. One was ever produced and it was commissioned by an Italian businessman and racing driver called Count Trossi, who actually designed bits of the car himself to one, look impressive, but also filter through the air in as clean of a way possible for racing. The car had close to 300 horsepower, which again for the 30s was a huge amount. It took about a year to complete and has won a few best of show prizes uh, since Ralph Lauren has owned the car. Right, this is a long name. I'm going to give this a go. This is 1938 Alfa Romeo 8C 2900 Millimiglia Spider. Yes! <laughs> Four of these cars were built by Alfa Romeo with the sole purpose of competing and winning the Millimiglia race. Starts in Brescia in Italy and goes all across the country on classic roads. It's not closed roads. It's proper road racing. The car was actually leading the race basically until the end, until it had a brake failure and ended up coming second. So never actually won Millimiglia, but one of the most beautiful cars, which Ralph Lauren bought in 2004 and had a one and a half to two year process restoring completely to its original condition with an original red interior, red lamp covers, absolute stunner of a car, and it actually won best in class at Pebble Beach. The restoration was based on the original body, of course. Awesome to have given the car basically a second life. Right, now we're gonna get into his classic Ferraris, which is where things really start getting nuts. Then we'll do the McLaren F1s, plural, and then Bugatti. We're getting there. Now the first Ferrari we're gonna talk about is Ralph Lauren's 1964 Ferrari 250 LM. His car was number 31 and chassis number 6321. Spent most of its life living in Australia actually and racing in Australia. It won 13 of the 19 Australian racing events that it took part in. And what makes this one super cool is that it was actually co-driven at one of the races by Sir Jackie Stewart, which gives it that little bit of extra history, which is awesome. To give you an idea of value, RM Auctions recently sold one of these similar kind of model for $14.3 million. Another one of his cars is his 1958 Ferrari Testarossa, one of my personal favorites, one of the most beautiful Ferraris I believe ever made. There are only 34 made, his is number 14. Now this car actually won Le Mans 58, 60 and 61. One of the most legendary Ferraris and one that collectors fight over. Reportedly a prototype chassis was sold back in 2011 for 16 million dollars. So you can only imagine how much Ralph Lauren's personal car would be worth today. Another cool and similar car is his Ferrari 250 TR61 which was built in 1961 and actually won the Sebring race in 61. Now two of these were ever built and one was bought by a rich kind of Italian playboy called Giovanni, of course, and he took the car back and he wanted to race against the Ferrari factory team in 1962. He bought it, slightly modified the engine and took it back and actually won beating the Ferrari factory team and Enzo Ferrari himself in Sebring in 1962. So, Ralph Lauren then purchased this car, one of only two in the world. How much is it worth? I have no idea, but a lot of money. Right, let's talk about one of his most famous and definitely one of his most valuable cars, his Ferrari 250 GTO. One was privately sold reportedly for $70 million not too long ago. Another model was sold for $38.3 million at an auction not too long ago either. It's a car which is worth around the $50 million mark, but that is not at all what Ralph Lauren paid for his. He bought his back in the 80s for $300,000. Picture that as an investment. There was only a two year production span for this car from 1962 to 1964. Now 36 of these cars were produced. From 1962 to 1963, there were actually 33 of the series one cars. And then in 1964, three of the Series 2. There were later four of the Series 1s, which were converted to Series 2. Absolutely epic car now, of course. What's interesting with these is they weren't actually that renowned and worth that much when they first came out in the 60s. Enzo had to handpick and did handpick every original owner of these cars. But um, they weren't worth that much at first. People didn't really know what they were and didn't value them that much. They weren't necessarily the, the most performing Ferraris of all time, the ones that were the most coveted and won the most, but all of a sudden they started going up in value. Of course, some were crashed over the years. Uh, some have been brought back fully original. Some only used certain parts, but it is definitely probably the most legendary Ferrari 
of all time and definitely the most expensive Ferrari of all time. So one of the masterpieces of Ralph Lauren's collection and definitely one of the centerpieces I imagine in his garage. Another super legendary car a lot of you will know about of course is the McLaren F1. 106 of these cars were produced between 1992 and 1998 and Ralph Lauren actually has a pretty standard looking silver road McLaren F1, which will be worth again, 10, 15, maybe even $20 million. It has a V12 actually produced by BMW, which produces 618 horsepower and 479 foot pounds of torque. It uses a six speed manual transmission, of course, to get the car up to a top speed of 240.1 miles per hour, which for a long time was a record until the Bugatti Veyron came along and beat that, but several years later. These are legendary cars, a lot of very famous owners as well, such as Rowan Atkinson or Mr. Bean, as you may know him. He's had one, but for Ralph, that wasn't quite enough. He had his silver McLaren F1. He decided to buy another one. He bought himself a McLaren F1 LM. Now an even more limited version, inspired of course by the F1s, which were so successful at Le Mans. Only five of these were made, excluding the prototype, which was kept by the factory, all in papaya orange, which is a very famous color, which of course has come back to McLaren today. Um, in Formula One, which was what the founder of the company, Bruce McLaren, used to choose to race his cars in. So this is an even more expensive version, probably around 20 to $25 million of the McLaren F1. So it's pretty cool to have a kind of very classic looking silver, which was the launch color McLaren F1, and next to that, an LM, which Ralph actually reportedly drives a fair amount. This, without a shadow of a doubt, would be the masterpiece of most people's collections. But in this collection, it's just another one of many, many, many cars. However, I think the undisputed masterpiece of the collection is the final car we're gonna talk about today, which is Ralph's 1938 Bugatti Type 57 SC Atlantic, which is the most expensive car in the world. You guys maybe already know the story behind the Atlantic, but it was a car built by a Tory Bugatti, well, built and designed by a Tory Bugatti's son, Jean Bugatti, who was actually sadly later killed while test driving one of his cars at only 30 years old. Only four of these legendary cars were ever built. One was crashed, one disappeared, and one is at a museum in the States. It was sold to the museum for $38 million many, many years ago, which gives you an idea of how much this car could be worth. SC, S stands for surbaissé, which means lower, and C stands for compresseur, which means supercharger, which was basically because one of the Bugatti clients wanted more power out of his car, so they put a supercharger on it. One of the most beautiful cars ever produced, inspired by airplanes back in the day. You can even see um, some bolts on the roof of the car. Ralph Lauren's personal car was built in 1937 and then bought by a British Bugatti enthusiast in 1938. This man kept it until 1988 when Ralph Lauren bought the car. It's pretty incredible that this is only a two owner car. He actually still has some of the original options such as seats filled with horsehair and goat skin leather seats as well. Um, it's also still got its original, you may have noticed, UK license plate, still matching with the car. Now this car won at the Pebble Beach Concours d'Elegance in 1990 and won at the Villa d'Este Concours d'Elegance in 2012. So it's won basically every Concours d'Elegance that you could dream of and is the only Bugatti Atlantic really that you could occasionally see driving around as the other one, and the only other one that we could potentially see is sat in a museum. Now, how much is this car worth? We have no idea. Some people say 70 million, 80 million, 100 million. No one really knows because the only one that could really come up for sale is Ralph Lawrence and it doesn't look like he's gonna be selling that anytime soon. Probably one of the most talked about and mysterious cars in the world, but also definitely one of the most beautiful. This has to be, at least for me, the masterpiece of Ralph Lauren's collection. Please give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it. It really helps out the channel. And comment down below your favorite car owned by Ralph Lauren that we talked about today. There are so many others that we could pick from. I've got a little list on my phone right here of other cars we could talk about in a future video. We've got a 1960 Ferrari 250 GT Berlinetta SWB, 1965 P2-3, uh, 300 SL Goldwing Coupe, 1979 Porsche 930, Mercedes-Benz 280 SE, Jaguar XKD long nose, Jaguar XK120. There are so many other cars that we could potentially talk about. So please comment down below if you want us to do another video on the rest of Ralph Lauren's car collection. This is definitely one of, if not the most impressive car collections in the world. Definitely the most impressive we've covered so far on these various celebrities 
As you know, comment down below someone else you'd like us to talk about in a future video. Hit that subscribe button if you haven't already, and we'll be seeing you again for another video very soon, guys. Thanks for watching, as always. Ciao, ciao.